Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 157 of Trials and Trebuchets. I'm your dungeon master, Luke, and joining me are my players, whose names are... Hi, my name is Ben, and I play the level 8 gnome wizard, Windsor Wallaby, along with his cuddly little companion, Mr. Wiggles. A large grub. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, it's me, Carla, the player to the level 8 tiefling roguelock Integrity Isla Idleberry. Eldritch Blast, Eldritch Blast, <laughs> I am one with oil and fire. Eldritch Blast, Eldritch Blast, you'll likely see me die. I'm in the stands, and here I'll stay. Don't let them kick me out. I've got no future anyway. Oh, damn. Oh, I'm, su I'm surprised we've <laughs> gone this long. That's sad. That's a fucking oh, frozen right? song. I know. That was dark. <laughs> it's very depressing. Yeah, I know, right? Sorry. Okay, well, we need an Encanto one next. Uh, I don't have mm -hmm. one written, but I just feel like oh, we should get I on that. I thought that was a segue. It, I haven't no, seen Encanto. Not yet, but I feel like we're going to get there. Hi, mm -hmm. I'm Sarah, and I play Mira Marchand, the level eight half-elf bard. So we beat Team Syndra, and now we get to sit at the winner's table along with Team Joan. I'm going to invite Delmas with me like just to see what happens. <laughs> and hello, my name is Sam and I play the level 8 human sorceress Serena Cinderman who is now also the queen. I've stated <laughs> it now. The wedding doesn't have to happen, but like the fact that like a scroll came in was like, "Hey, BT Dubs, the prince loves you. Uh, she's queen now. She doesn't have to get married. She's just the queen now. She took over the, the throne queen completely." Her. Queen. Yeah. Sarah. Listen, just kill him on your wedding night. Are you not allowed to make fun of you anymore? <laughs> We've made the joke so many if times. Queen, at you this can point. excommunicate your parents. <laughs> And last time on Trials and Trebuchets, the students fought their upperclassmen, pelting them with hail, causing some back hurting laughter, slowing everything down just a little notch and uh, giving everyone a breathing room, and of course conjuring an aberrant grub from beyond the far reaches of the multiverse in order to fucking hit people with psychic tendrils. The four first years... Obviously won handily. The only casualty being Winsler's pride, as always. Again. <laughs> uh, winnings in hand, the students watched in awe and admiration as Serenepth Cinderman's royal betrothal was made intensely public. Uh, <laughs> we find ourselves amidst a deadly silent evocation department. Uh, the three of you, Mira Marchand, Integrity Idleberry, and Serenep, uh, soon to be a royal cinderman, uh, are standing on, in the field still, in the middle, uh, where you had just been kind of like hoisted, oh, they're the winners, and had spoken with Kenneth Horse Wrangler, and he left you there, and in walked this fellow. He's still on one knee, Serenep, holding up a long scroll to you with a big royal-looking seal. Uh, he, he has poofy blue and silver and white p pants and uh, coats and a big stupid hat with a f f flippy little uh, swan feather. It's far too long. Yes. It looks absurd. Uh, but he pulls it off, uh, and uh, draped over one uh, of his shoulders is this long pole arm with a big old flag with the Cinderman family crest emblazoned upon it. Serenap, he, he's oh, and there's a trumpet on the ground next to him. That's an important detail that won't come up. Uh, but nonetheless, this 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 Cinderman family herald Serenap is on one knee, has just proclaimed to the entire entirety of this, the, uh, what to feels like to you the world, uh, and is holding out. This, presumably the written account of the royal betrothal, Serenep. How are you doing? What do you react? The crowd is silent, a hushed excitement. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> mm. I think the <laughs> best way to describe what's yes. going on in Serenep's <laughs> head Yes. is that cartoon scene where the file there's like a filing cabinet that's on fire <laughs> just in the brain everyone's like running around and screaming mm -hmm. and Spongebob. she just kind of like she doesn't say anything I think she just kind of like brings her hand out yes and takes the scroll because she knows that if she doesn't take it right now like her parents are gonna know about it uh -huh. instantly so she just yes. reaches instantly. out and she just <laughs> takes the end of it absolutely and 
is now holding it. <laughs> you grasp this royal betrothal proposal, whatever it is, in your hands, staring up. The, the herald squire guy lets go of it and, like, kneels even lower and, like, bows his head a little bit and will say... At your service, uh, the, 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 the soon-to-be royal Lady Cinderman. And he'll, like, bow his head. What is, what is um, Mira and Integrity doing in this moment? You're just kind of standing here, like, third, or, like, I guess not really third and fourth wheeling, but just, like, hanging out. <laughs> You're also here. I feel like I'm just exchanging a look with Integrity of, like, this weird tension of, like, are we supposed to say anything? Like, just staring at her, like, uh. Meanwhile, Integrity is like half clapping, half not <laughs> clapping because, oh my gosh, my cousin's getting married to the prince. But then also like, but then she does not want to get married to the prince. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so it's mm-hmm. like, I think know, like changing <laughs> faces. Yeah. Face so, like, I don't so, know what my feelings are right now. Integrity and Mira, you share this glance as Integrity uh, half claps, half tries to stop herself from just the glee, cl- uh, like just uh, expressing itself from her hands of like, oh my god, rich rich relatives. Um, <laughs> and, and fair enough, you grasp this uh, proposal in your hands. And Integrity, the crowd seeing you kind of clap and being like, that's social permission to clap, uh, seems to also begin tentatively clapping louder and louder and louder. It erupts. Uh, A lot of people go, wow, a princess. Uh, Can you make perception checks for me? All of us? Sure. Except Winsler, who's not here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was already clear. (laughs) Winsler's busy with something else. I have exploded. (laughs) He had to very quickly leave for an important meeting after he completely kicked the ass of everyone with a giant grub. It was insane. 13. 17 plus 6. Holy shit. 23. Uh, That is a... In total, 16. Mm, mm, mm. Saranup. The the sound kind of fills your ears... It's loud. You hear a lot of people like cheering for you excitedly, almost excited of like you hear the excitement of like, oh, my God, we're going to have a princess as a classmate. Isn't that the coolest shit that's ever happened at Wildcliff? Uh, hmm. Mira, it's a lot of clapping. You are uh, uh, what would be occupying your mind to prevent you from noticing a couple of other things, do you think? Um. I feel like I'm just like standing here and I'm mostly just like worried for Serenup. Like I'm not mm-hmm. really that much thinking about like, oh, the crowd's mm-hmm. doing this. I'm more thinking about like, oh, fuck, the crowd is clapping. That's really bad because yeah. she's already really stressed. And like, oh, my God, yes. like if the crowd keeps clapping, like they're just going to get louder and louder. And like she needs to find a way to respond. And like she's not going to be able to do that because like I know how she gets when she's stressed and like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this runs through your head as you just watch the back of Serenup's head. Um, integrity, you you stop clapping for a second and kind of look around uh, as the the, the, the crowd erupts into applause and you like scan around up in that nobles section integrity idleberry first and foremost you'll see a recognizable set of eyes looking down uh maybe the face isn't super recognizable uh but he is wearing like a jackal mask and you can see his like yellowy eyes looking down you see philip mazel who was only moments ago clapping for all of your uh success in winning the duel you might re- remember quite uh, jubilantly. Uh, he looks, he's clapping politely, like a, he, as if he was at a golf tournament and didn't know what was happening, but everyone else is clapping. Um, as your eyes continue scanning integrity, they land upon your mother and two siblings in the crowd. Shit. Uh, your siblings are not paying attention whatsoever. It seems they're playing with some shit on like the, the, the seats. Um, but... Your mother is kind of looking very worried, I don't think captures it, but just uh, almost the expression of someone who, like, just got confirmation of, like, oh, I am right, and then, like, a a sorrow, almost, of, like, or just, like, pity, I think it would be a good way to describe it. Just looking down at, uh, you can see Serenep Cinderman standing in that field. Uh, the crowd continues uh, applauding, hooting and hollering. People are standing at this point. It's kind of uh, rude because, like, they're clapping way louder than when you guys won uh, at the fact that Serenaf just got uh, proposed to by proxy. Um, what do you all want to do? Um, I think, like, her brain, like, her brain isn't, like, holding on to the crowd. Like, everything's just mm-hmm. too loud. Absolutely. And so yeah. she is looking to, like, um, the Herald... Yes. And she says, um, you may be excused. And, As you wish. And we will talk um, later about 
the arrangement for my parents' arrival. Would you, do you have a specific instruction for me, or am I to just fend for myself and complete my list of chores? Uh, you may complete your list of chores. Uh, we will Very meet well. later in the evening, if you wish. Um, of course, please. if you wish, Lady Cinderman. <laughs> I am at your service, a um, herald of your great home. <laughs> I live only to serve the Cindermans. Uh, and as the only current Cinderman on campus, I live to serve you. Um, if you find free time, please take a moment for yourself and look around the merchant tables. Mm. Um, take the take um, food, such. Yes. Um, and we will talk later this evening. Of course. I will search for a present to celebrate your betrothal. And of course, I will arrange for food to be delivered to your room for this very evening, Lady Cinderman. Uh, as you were, I will be off um, immediately to fulfill your requests. Thank you very much for such uh, humility. And he'll bow deeply. Even though he's already kneeling, he bows and then stands up promptly and like uh, marches off of the field, Serenep. Uh, she's like, as he's going, like, that's not what I, uh, okay. Yeah. He also leaves that giant trumpet or horn or whatever there on the field. Just, just not take it with him. <laughs> just... Can I take it? You can take it, absolutely. <laughs> take it. It's, it, it's incredibly, we- Mira, you look at that horn for two seconds as Integrity grabs it. Like a shit-ass instrument, but damn if it ain't well made, right? Disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think she's going to use the advantage of the fact that they're all wearing, like, the fencing uniforms. Like, you can't mm-hmm. really see completely like the face at the moment mm-hmm. and she's going to turn to mira and integrity she's like can can we please get off the can we please <laughs> oh my god yes of course let's go <laughs> okay absolutely i'm sorry for <laughs> clapping it's it's okay uh are you okay um i uh we we should we should go check on winsler mm. okay while we're walking i'm going to act like sort of um like a bouncer <laughs> like stay away from her folks yeah. Yes. Yeah. Integrity forms a perimeter around <laughs> Serenep, has the sort horn of... up ready to do Integrity something to someone. Integrity as one person forms a perimeter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's just in so many places at once. Uh, and I just want to make sure you... that no one talks to Serenep. Absolutely. Without like Ooh. her wanting to talk. How to do them. you do that? Um, you Give know, me, like, um, you wanna, like in, in magazines you, or in videos mm. of paparazzis <laughs> where it's like, no, you're not even allowed to look at her. I'm going to like hide her face with my hand. And whenever <laughs> yeah. like someone tries to come close, I'm going to like walk in, like stand in front of them and be like, no, you can't talk. Can you make me an right. intimidation check? Also known as a buffalo check. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> I love this. I got an 11. Oh, I see. Uh, so the three of you walk into this breezeway, which surrounds the evocation field. Uh, the cheering's died a little bit, although people are still in the stands, like loudly exclaiming things. And most people aren't leaving their seats because there are more duels to witness this very day. But a fair few have crowded around the staircase, which is like right around your guys' like prep room. So as you walk back into the breezeway, Integrity, you start to try to form a perimeter. You start to try to form a perimeter, a one-woman perimeter around Serenep. But like the 30 people who are here and want to like see Serenep up close uh, very much uh, can get by you. No problem. They don't seem to be too concerned with you at all. You kind of like put your hands up and be like, no, no one get close to her. And they will brush you off like you do not exist. You are nothing. Um, uh, It's okay. You're intimidating to me. Seem to fawn over you, Serenep. You you feel it yourself, I think, under the scrutiny of many more eyes than you normally would be as people seem to just watch the way you walk. You hear two people talking about like, I mean, she doesn't really walk like a royal, right? So like, mm, right? And it's just like the shit. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But the three of you can hurry back to the prep room. So many mean people in this school. And close the door, though, to get some privacy, if that's what you would like to do. The three of you hurry in, and Integrity uh, does slam the door uh, in everyone's face. Inside the room, there's there's no Winsler where he normally would be on one of these beds in here in your prep room. There's four beds in here, one of them for each of you, should you poof away uh, and and go to back to the prep room. There's no Winsler. Huh. Where did he go? Did I remember the duel wrong, and did we just kind of leave him out there? 
<laughs> no, he definitely pooped. Maybe he already got up and left. Oh. And we cut to the infirmary, Winsler. <laughs> A disconcerting place to yes. wake up. Tr in truth, uh -oh. you just did this the other day, and you woke up in a duel, like in your dueling prep room, uh, and so you don't really have any idea of why you might be here, Winsler. Maybe uh, because I got fucking nuked. <laughs> I mean, that <laughs> makes sense. But why you're in this place? Not so much, right? True. Um, like normally, they just have the healers on standby I don't like at being the arena. In the infirmary. It feels no. Weird. It feels weird. It smells weird. There is a healer kind of like standing over you when you come to with a little like clipboard and like writing things down on it in with a big ploofy quill and they'll look at you in the eyes and push their glasses up and say can you feel all your toes i'm gonna try wiggling my toes they wiggle yeah i can, I can feel them all 10 right did you have 10 did you have 10 before yeah <laughs> Okay. I, I think I've always had 10. If I had less or more, I'd be concerned. I mean, well, some shit, gnomes have, have 12, now. don't they? That's what we learned in school. But if you have the 10, then you have the 10. I, I have, the I healer have like have puts up a hand and like, like it's no matter, it's no matter. Uh, it's 10, 10, no burns, no visible burns. Uh, I apologize that you've woken up here. It seems that there was a problem going on with the evocation department. I don't know what the abjurers are up to over there, uh, but this is uh, quite out of the ordinary. The two of you poof, poofed in here a couple seconds apart. Um, the, the two of us? And the healer who's will... The, who's the second? The healer will point over you, and you'll kind of like turn in the bed uh, and look over to your right, and you'll see another healer uh, d doing a similar kind of check-in procedure uh, with a uh, short human girl with orange hair and like big glasses. The glasses are actually taken off and put in, put on the side table. Uh, you see Charlotte Sullivan uh, yes. lying there in an infirmary bed, probably like three feet away from you. When did she get here? Uh, she got here a couple. She got here um, a little bit after you. A little bit before you. It did. Kind of around the same time, honestly. Like, within six or so seconds. Like, within that kind of time period. Is that... Is, is there a problem? Do we need to separate you? Is there, like, no, no, bad no, blood? No, 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 no. There's no problem. Do I think to, I think there, everything's fine. I'm the, just surprised that... The healer takes their glasses off and lets them hang by the beaded chain around their neck and will, like, lean into you and say, Is there something going on here? Do you need, do you need like, help with something? No. I don't think I need help. I think are, I'm good. I think I'm okay. Are, are you 100% certain? We see this kind of, hey, we see this kind of thing all the time. Very natural, you know? Like, if you need help, you can just say, yeah, I need help. And we can just, like, keep you here for, like, a couple hours uh, under examination, you know? <laughs> well, well, I'm... Well, you know, my friends are probably... Of course, your friends. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, and they'll sign something on the uh, form and then, p like, rip it off and pass it to you and go, uh, you're all solid, ready to go. I would drink two of those potions before you uh, head back onto campus, though, and they'll point it to raspberry-smelling, fragrant, open uh, cups on your side table, Winsler, uh, healing potions by your nose's recognition. Uh, and the healer will kind of stand back up and say, and if you don't need any help, you don't need any help. And they'll smile knowingly at you. It's fucking attendance, I swear. <laughs> and walk away, leaving you. Uh, Charlotte seems to have, be having a quick conversation with a healer of her own. Uh, if you wanted to slurp those two healing potions down, Winsler, and think about what you wanted to do. Slowly sip mm -hmm. and think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, after three or so minutes, as this other uh, healer goes through like a big, way bigger checklist of things than that healer did with you. Like you don't oh, know, if, you don't know if it's like they just skipped it or they did it when you were unconscious. It's unclear to you. Um, you kind of look down at the form that they handed you, and there's like eight check boxes that super weren't checked off, and it might be a bit worrying. I don't know. I'm not like here to tell you how you feel about medical services. Um, but nonetheless, after three minutes. You can slowly sip on one of these raspberry flavored potions, regain a couple of hit points, uh, a D8 plus four hit points, please. Ooh. A D8 plus anything? Four. Or a D8 plus, plus two. Okay, so that's <laughs> nine. Perfect. You, you gain nine wonderful hit points, Winsler. Um, oh, I'm eight. <laughs> yeah. And um, good. the other healer leaves Charlotte and see, she seems to just kind of awkwardly be sitting up in her bed, also have being, having been given a release form. So, um, f 
fancy meeting you here, <laughs> I, I, I guess. Yeah, it's it's really just a, the, a weird thing, <laughs> right? Uh, and she's just looking straight um, forward. She's not looking at you, <laughs> Winsler. <laughs> uh, I saw that they had a bunch of lots of stuff to check off on that list. Um, what's yeah. the situation? Uh, I mean, they just wanted to know if my back was okay. Mostly, your one of your your friend threw me into a wall, so they were just like making sure everything was cool. Um, yeah, not too hard. Uh, well, it was kind of it was kind of hard. Uh, like enough that I like I didn't hit my head or anything, but just like it was mostly the hail that did it. That was really that was like a difficult um duel. Uh, <clears throat> hey, uh, about that thing that I said before the duel started. Uh, just like don't. We, I was just talking, and you know, I like my mouth got carried away, and oh, said, yeah. Uh, "Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah." No, no, no worries about that. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. How how long are you gonna be in here? I mean, I could leave. I already it was allowed to leave. Like the the sheet says, I'm fine. So I could just go find like my team and stuff again, or go on campus to like the festival grounds alone <laughs> and she like <laughs> wipes her nose i'm going to i'm going to get out of bed slowly yes which side um, the one that's next to her or the one next up? <laughs> next to her <laughs> okay okay you you do um, so you stand tall uh just <clears throat> your head poking right above the the the, the lip of the bed so she's kind of like looking to her left down at you now um and i'm going to i'm going to bring over the second health potion yes. and give it to her amazing uh she looks at you now making eye contact her face a flush bright pink colored uh of almost embarrassment or just awkwardness winsler uh and she will tentatively take that healing potion from you. Your fingers touch gently as the <laughs> little glass passes hands. And she goes, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that That's fine. Um, This is, I, I, I'm so sorry. This is, I'm dying right now. Not, I'm not dying like in terms of like, I'm going to die of a moral that, <laughs> I'm dying, like I'm so shy. I feel so shy right now. And uh, like, I don't know if this happened to you, but like at like a, t a week or like a couple days after the whole sewer incident, like a ton of stuff came like back into my head, and I just got like filled with like a lot of stuff, like br like things and memories and stuff and feelings that weren't like a hundred percent mine. Uh, and now I I'm like processing that, and it feels I just feel really awkward and shy around you. I kind of feel the same. I'll admit. Oh, so like you got a, little... a bunch of memories back and stuff too, and that's why you feel shy. <laughs> Not exactly, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. probably for a similar reason, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, listen, I had I had a lot of fun in the duel. Mm -hmm. I really hope you get better soon. I gotta mm -hmm. go meet my friends, but we should we should ha How about hang we out at the gala tomorrow sometime and study. I'm studying. Also good. Yeah. Ignore what I said. I'm going to um, kiss her cheek and run away. <gasps> oh! Make a persuasion <laughs> check with advantage, please. What was the check? A persuasion check with advantage, please. And thank oh you, Winsla Wallaby. Oh, oh my god, they kiss persuasion. cheeks. They, they, I, I don't know if you didn't hear what sh I said or what Charlotte said, uh, but nonetheless, very fun stuff. I can't believe I just said like, kiss cheeks and that kiss was cheeks. my sentence. It's like, what? Winsler? So with advantage, oh no, uh, natural twenty <laughs> plus, oh my God. plus one, so that's twenty one. <laughs> you kiss her ear. <laughs> uh, I miss. <laughs> she when you suggest like you guys kind of talk over each other at a second, and and you say louder, let's let's uh, we can study sometime. And she just kind of like nods uh, quickly and goes, yeah, that sounds good too. Ignore what I said. And then you like, and she like looks away for a second and like takes a big sip of that healing potion, just like trying kind of like trying to be like, oh my god, like let me catch my breath for a moment. Uh, and then you like <laughs> lean in and kiss her on the cheek, and she like s s uh, like stops drinking for a second and like spits a little bit of it back out, like very like uh, awkwardly charming, Winsler. Uh, and then you like turn to like run away, and she goes, "Please don't ignore what I said. I said let's like dance at the gala tomorrow." 
and she yells it at you as you like run out of the infirmary. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop at the door mm-hmm. as she says that, and I'm gonna turn around and say, "I accept," and then run away. <laughs> Winsler, you see you see the two uh, healers at the front desk, the one with the beaded chain necklace t- on their glasses, uh, and looks the one that was helping you out, and looks at you and just gives you a big knowing wink and then goes back to filling out paperwork <laughs> and you can close the door and run to the evocation department where your friends super are. Oh, that was so cute. Jesus Christ. <laughs> God, the oh. Mira, you should really get some lessons from Winslow on how to be like super <laughs> charming. That's true. <laughs> that was fucking smooth. If all the, if all um, the times you get a natural 20. That yeah, was no kidding. That's a good one. I was like, Ben's going to get a five and this is going to go bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was expecting it to go horribly. So back at the evocation department, there's some quiet in the preparatory room as the three of you as staring up kind of like you can begin to mentally process what just happened and what the the events that continue are were you all having talking about anything specific or just the kind of like general carried on conversation of what was happening of like oh my god what what's going to happen i th- if it's possible yeah i think now that we're like possible. in the privacy and everything she'll finally like take off her helmet and like read the scroll ah ha ha it's a long document, Serenup. Quite long. Oh. You unfurl it, and after like a couple of seconds of unfurling it, you would give a rough estimate. I think of it being like a six meter scroll. There's a lot of stuff in here. Most of it it reads like a legal contract. To be frank, of uh, you will be wed to uh, Prince Frederick the Fourth in a few years' time. The details are nebulous in that case. It just refers to it as like the marriage date. Uh, it doesn't give an actual date, Serenepth. So, like, you're safe on that front. I think that might be a small reassurance for you. It's like if you got a wedding invitation, but you're but it's the your fucking wedding. bride. Literally, though. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, a so lot of weird. it is written almost as if it's a business contract of, like, you will be moved, or you and your things will move to this residence on this day, this many days following uh, the marriage date. Uh, this will be the case. Uh, here are your obligations as an incoming member of the Ashwin royal family. Uh, and it's it's certain things such as not <laughs> present, not, as, not associating with enemies of th- the royal family, right? Not associating with known traitors, not speaking of their names, uh, being present in certain uh, dress codes at certain events when you are required to. And here's what you can wear when you aren't at those events. And here's what you can wear when you are in private. And like these very firm business contract agreements. Oh my God. Uh, and then you keep unfurling it. And at the very, very bottom of this scroll, after all of these incredible demands, Serenepth, uh, signed at the bottom uh, with no place for an additional signature, uh, is a... Uh, King Frederick III, uh, as well as uh, Lord Bertram uh, Sinderman and Lady Olivia Sinderman. Uh, no, no sign, no signature place for uh, any Serenup Sinderman, uh, but it's already been worked out for you. I think, oddly enough, it's a bit of a relief that mm-hmm. it's not a love declaration. Mm, there's it nothing sounds... about the words love in here there's there's the words yeah. love but only as they pertain to like you are obligated to have this many children which you know yeah yeah i think there's in a weird sense there's mm-hmm. a relief that because I, I think she's maybe seen a couple of these before like in context mm-hmm. of other mm-hmm. um lords Betrothals. and ladies yeah. of the castle like receiving yes. these at some point this is definitely the most robust a lot of other ones have a, a glimmer of earnesty to them of actual emotion to them Serenep. and this one does not have that at all it's very much devoid of it like do i like what do i know of the prince Ooh, ah uh, you can make me a history check with advantage if you want to know yeah. about that yeah. Yeah, because like I'm hundred percent guessing that we didn't really like see each other ever, like no, at the no. castle or anything like that. Uh, and additionally, I think 
integrity, you could also make a history check as a member of this kingdom. Uh, although you're not from the capital, you might know some rumors or just street tales of the royal family if you wanted to make that history check as yes. well. Just not uh, So advantage. I have uh, 23 in total for history. Mm, perfect. Um, I also got 20. Oh, 20. Fascinating. Okay, in this case, Serenup, what you mm-hmm. know of through uh, just generally racking your brain about things you might know about this Prince Frederick, you know that he's roughly the same age as you, a bit like a year younger maybe. You know that he served in the Ashuan Navy, right, mm-hmm. for a couple of years. Uh, and you know that he attended a couple of large events uh, with you as a like, young child, like when you were probably like seven or so. Uh, and since then, I don't think you've really interacted with him uh, in a formal manner. He's just fairly been absent from the capital. Although you know that he's held in high regard and is the uh, current heir, right? Mm-hmm. Integrity Idleberry. What's a juicy piece of gossip about this dude? Oh, boy. That is truth. I want to make a careful note of. Like, it, it, this is not like castle gossip. This is like uh, the lay people view the prince in this fashion, and it is the truth. Well-meaning, but an idiot. Ah, the best. Oh, boy. The best. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, clumsy so I will truly doofus. be ruling this ruling the land because my husband is a buffoon. Carla, you've just given me such a gift. You said, oh, no. "Yeah, let's we make this a need big a chester lovable because idiot. my husband's a clown already." <laughs> <laughs> Prince Fred. She taught him to juggle, and that was like the best thing for entertainment. <laughs> Chill. Yeah, that is the in the streets integrity in in the town of Dry Falls. Word t- travels fast of the royals who have never come to this city ever in the history of it. Uh, people, merchants traveling from the capital, tell lots of stories of like this idiot prince who's like he totally meant to like set things up right, but he absolutely like he absolutely fucked this thing up or like he's just completely incompetent like i heard there one day he was in the town square giving hundreds of gold each to baggers because he didn't understand that that would be a dangerous amount of money to give to people in the streets right uh just like very well intentioned but doesn't understand the wider world right that's your perception that's your rumor knowing all of this is there a conversation ongoing within the prep room I think she, I don't think Serenup's saying anything. I think she's kind of like her hands are kind of shaking and she's just kind of staring at this roll. Absolutely. Hey, hey, do you need to sit down? Uh that yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Just sit on like one of the beds. Yeah, I'll, like guide mm-hmm. her over and be mm-hmm. like are are you can I can I can like I get you anything? That was that was inc- that was like crazy. Uh I um I I don't I don't know. Um. Okay. Is there like like a water jug or anything like that Absolutely. in the room? There's like a huge water jug over in the corner. It's like the kind that you like you can like pump and it like turns out water. Yeah. I'm mean, gonna like sort of pour her a little glass of water and sort of like push it into mm-hmm. her hands. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We don't yeah. need to talk about this, but you don't want this, right? I I really don't. I had. I mean, when we talked about it before, I s- remember saying, like, you know, maybe, like, even though we agreed that it was going, it would only happen after I graduated, that they might already set something up. But I didn't think that they would, like, I didn't think that they would, like, get a prince involved. I didn't think that they would, like, d- do an announcement for it. Like, I don't. Do you know what you're going to do? I think she starts to tear up. Mm. And I think she just says, I, uh, I've had so many thoughts in the past and now that it's happening, I don't, I can't remember them right now. Um, Mm -hmm. we, um, uh, I don't, she kind of like looks to you, Mira, because you asked the question. She's like, she's like, I I don't, I don't know. I don't. Looking like, please just suggest something. We'll we'll get you through this. We'll get you through this. Okay. Mm -hmm. All of us, we are on your side. Anything you want to do, we'll, we'll help you. We'll support you. If you know, if you need, if you need time, if you need, if you need anything, it's it's not happening right away, right? You have you have time to to plan something. This this isn't fair. They can't do that to you. Like we'll figure it out. <laughs> A lot of things when it comes to royalty is not fair. 
Um, it's it's not gonna it's not right away. It's gonna be. I I just didn't think that they would. I mean, why wouldn't they have something set up so soon? They're always prepared for this kind of stuff. Um, oh God, and Philip. Oh God, Philip saw all that too, and oh. I don't like my the others. And there's people outside and they're watching me and I have to do so many things to, I don't, oh my God. Okay. Okay. Um, well, we can, we have some like disguise magic stuff. If we need to go around campus, we can, we can use something like that for now. Make sure people are not staring at you at the moment. Um, if you need to find a way to talk to Philip, we can find a way to like go get Philip get you to talk to him. There's there's lots of time to plan this stuff. Um, for now, why don't we just give you some time and make sure that people aren't going to be staring at you or being weird or making this a thing and it, it, it'll work out. <sighs> yeah, thank you. I'm going to give Serenup the hug. Absolutely. I was just about to say, and you can hug Serenup. So I'm glad <laughs> we're on the same Aww. page for the scene. Uh, Mira, you give her a big hug. I imagine the two of you sitting on the bed next to one another. Integrity may be sitting on the other side of Serenup as well with like a hand on her back. Um, and you can all take a couple of moments. You hear the clamoring crowd outside the door kind of die down. Uh, Winsler, at this point, you're kind of like scuttling towards the uh, uh, evocation department still just to establish our timeline. And uh, there's a knock at the door. It has a rhythm to it. Uh, was the door locked or did you guys just leave it? I imagine it's locked, right? Yes. Yes. Integrity locked it after yes. she slammed Absolutely. it. So Absolutely. I'm also going to check and open the door. <laughs> you open the door a crack uh, and you see a kind of uh, mildly bearded elven man. He has like... Uh, blonde hair. He looks like Jack Black, but blonde. Oh, fuck. Um, and his <laughs> face is like oh, right it. there in the crack. And he goes, oh, hi. Uh, is uh, Well, uh, hi, Integrity. Uh, is Mira there? I need to talk with her very badly. No. As Professor, Professor Raythrin looks dead in your eyes. Oh, no. <laughs> you say no? <laughs> you fucking say no? <laughs> Make a deception I think, check. I think, we, I think, like, do we hear... You absolutely talking. hear him. You absolutely okay, hear him. I like, I like gesture Elmer mirror to like hide go. on the other side of the bed away <laughs> out of the side of the door. I like crawl behind Saren up so I'm like behind yeah. her. I, it's very important that I speak to her right now. Um, I can receive a message because Mira just like left earlier. Um, like I look at my um, wrist that does not have a watch. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. So she left earlier uh, like around like 10 minutes ago. Hmm. And when it, that was in the so, middle of the duel. So are you sure about that one? Um, I meant, wait, let me look at my watch again. Oh, I don't uh -huh, have any. Uh -huh. Um, Mira, three minutes Mira, ago. I love this there. because integrity has a feat where she always knows she what, knows time, what it time it is. <laughs> it's just, it's just a habit to look at her wrist. <laughs> Mira, if you're in there, I would like very badly to speak with you for a moment. Serenup grabs like the clothes that they were changing out and like she like extra hides Mira <laughs> just to, like there's no one here I have a very good memory and I uh -huh. swear whatever message you leave me I can let Mira know okay or if you need Mira uh, if, to talk if she doesn't to want to later. speak to me right now please just convey the message and he'll say it a bit loud. I think he absolutely, yeah, I mean, he saw you walk in here, Mira. Um, so unless you like scooted it out through a secret tunnel. Mira which jumped exists. out of the window. Um, actually, <laughs> Mira is not here at the moment. <laughs> Mira she phased who? through the floor. We don't Mira know where she is anymore. Mira face planted and teleported to the infirmary. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> he'll say, I wanted to talk to her about last night. So if you can pass that message along to her, <laughs> I, I would love that. that. I might like sort of sort of shuffle back and like I kind of mm. sigh because I'm like, oh, this conversation has to happen. So I'm like, uh, I, I say very loudly like, oh, that was a good bathroom break. I'm back now. <laughs> and then oh I, go, gosh, Mira, <laughs> I go up to the There's door. There's 100% like, no, not here. a bathroom in this room. No. Oh, of course absolutely. there's not a bathroom in this room. I'm like, thanks, Integrity. It's it's cool. I'm, I, can't, I just got back just now. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you go through that other door? <laughs> yeah, I used that teleportation <laughs> spell that I was practicing to go to the bathroom. Can we please talk about last night? Yeah, right what's, now? what's up? Very what's urgent. up, Professor Raythrin? Uh, do you want to open the door <laughs> fully? I'll everything? open it, like, just enough that he can step in, but not enough that, like, other people okay. who are around can, like, enter or see Serenaf or okay. anything. Okay. <laughs> so as Elric Raythrin repeatedly goes, I need to speak to you about last night. It's very important that we talk about it. It's a big deal. 
like, I really need to talk to you about this. Uh, Mira, you pull the door open just a crack more so that he can slip through. And you see, like, coming down the hallway, almost within earshot as he continues, like, saying this stuff very loudly. You see your, like, parents wandering down to come chat with you, Mira, uh, as Elric Rathen's like, last night, it was, like, it was a very, it's a very big thing. Okay. And, and do you want to pull him into the room? Yeah, I'll like pull him in, like okay. slam the door even more. <laughs> Perfect. You pull him in, you slam the door again. Uh, and he, he like stumbles into the room a little bit. He looks very disheveled uh, as if he's not been keeping up with his appearance this past week, obviously. Uh, and he'll and he'll cough a couple times as he like stumbles. And he'll like, gather his breath and he'll look at you and he'll wipe his eyes. And he'll say, Delness told me what happened. What happened? Delnis told me about the ritual last night. Oh, that what happened. Because I stayed up waiting for her to come home. Uh-huh. And she was... Uh, she was... Uh, I, I mean, not in a great headspace last night when she came home. And I asked and she told me. And I, I came to campus this morning. Uh, specifically to speak with you about it, Mira. And I was using the, the like the cover of like, oh, let's to- go talk about the song thing, which is important and relevant, but but hmm. mostly to talk to you about letting my daughter die last night. Um, right. Uh, so we can talk about that now. Would you t- want to talk about it here in front of your friends? They were all there. They all were there for the ritual. Um, mm-hmm. it was. We did it um, on Delnus's suggestion, and we we got all of the materials, and we 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 tried very hard to do what we could. We got we got artists back, mm-hmm. but yeah, it um it there were a few people um who died just just for a second. Everybody was Delnus. brought back, but it still shouldn't have yes. happened. And no, no, no. It was her idea. More or less. Um, she was the one who suggested building a, a flesh golem and, and, and stuff. But that doesn't mean that it was okay that she died. And I I just wanted to help. It was it was terrifying um, for both of us. Yes. Was it worth it? Like, did it work? I yes, mean, yes, not, it worked. Artist is re- artist yeah. again. Okay. He, well, he was in a rock. I don't know if she mentioned that I part. I didn't listen to it. That's don't fair. Don't really care for it. That's fair. He'll look at you very like beaten down, an expression which Elric Rathen does not wear very often, right? He normally looks like performatively uh, excited uh, or just like on all the time, Mira. And he looks very like haggard and beaten down in this moment. And he'll kind of say, look like chew his lip for a second and then say, <sighs> to hear that she's the one suggesting it. And to know that she's involved with all of this, to know that she's died and come back to life is... And please don't tell her I've said this, any of you. But it's terrifying to me as her father. Um, I, I'm i just very afraid of her going down that road of, of continually pursuing... Uh, Already being, she's already, I, I, when she came to school, I don't know if she ever told you about this, when she was coming to school, when she was a kid, I, I was always hoping that she'd be in the musical applications program, or maybe the enchantment program, or maybe some something else, but she did necromancy, just mm-hmm. like her mother, and I was, I was terrified that it would turn out in a similar fashion, and hearing about this is, is, just, is just worrisome. And and so mm-hmm. I would ask that you, as her girlfriend, Mira, uh, please just keep her here. Of course. But when you say in a similar fashion, what do you mean by that exactly? Make a persuasion check. Okay. You know, the, the fact that he's referencing this in, with regards to her dying and coming back is like immediately a fucking persuasion. Mm. My wife died and came back. Mm. <laughs> she hasn't been the same since. She doesn't laugh That's at my total of 15. anymore. Mm. And I say the he... total number because that makes the raw number look better. <laughs> <laughs> like a two oh, plus yeah. a thousand. Um, he looks at you, Mira, and then you see him very quickly glance at Integrity and Saren up in this room. Um, and it almost looks like he changes what he's going to say based on that, Mira. And he'll say, I just mean that to be so committed to a particular field of study as that, that it, it, it just can be all consuming. 
I I uh-huh. I saw that happen to my wife. She left to go work with the Lady of the Woods, and her career just it it just took everything out of her. And I just don't want that to happen to my daughter as well. Uh huh. I... I'm sure your parents feel the exact same way of 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 not wanting you to repeat their mistakes and and or or just live happier lives than they've lived. Yeah, they they've been pretty worried about me just the, just the same. I'll make sure to I'll make sure to keep Delna safe. I will. Um, okay. Professor Raythrin, um, on the topic yes. of the song. On the topic um, of the song, we need to get together sometime before tomorrow <sighs> afternoon and practice it. I it. Yeah. I wanted to say that I don't think I can help you with it. I'm really sorry. I I, I don't. I know this might not be Mira. what you want to hear, but I spoke to I spoke to Adeline, and she I said something about you know the idea of it to her, and she just didn't seem. I think it would be a mistake, and I just don't. I I don't think that I could in 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 good conscience help you with it. I'm sorry. I I need this. Oh. Please. And this, it's, it's not just for me. I want my daughter to have her mother around her more often. I want her to, 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 to know the warmth that I know of Adeline, that I miss of her. I, I really do believe, against what she might have told you, that if I sang for her, it would work. Why don't you just talk to her? It's not that easy, Mira. Look, she's um, changed. I know. Over the years, and I mean, I don't think that a conversation, a simple conversation, could do that. It could, 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 could convey what I feel, how I still feel about her, as well as just a song could, as well as whatever we could do together. I just, I. Professor Raythrin, when I spoke to her, I don't, I don't know if you know what I'm referencing here, and if I know what you're referencing here, but I don't think she's the same person that you knew, if you catch no. my drift. He doesn't... Make an insight check, Mira. Yeah. Um, that's a 14 plus... Uh, what even is my insight? Uh, 3. 17. Okay. Uh, he passes over what you say, not in a dismissive way, but in like a very, what's the best way to put it? Not a way that's saying like, no, 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 what are you talking about? But a way of saying like, oh, you're saying that, but let's talk about it in this way, mm. right? If that makes sense. And he'll say, mm. it was, it, 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 when we were young together, it was almost as if there there was warmth to her. And now, uh... It's like winter seeped into the cracks of of her person. She she left to work for the Lady of the Woods and ha- didn't ever come back the same person. And I I believe I can pull her back, Mira. I believe that we can do that together. I wouldn't be asking you if I didn't believe that we could earnestly. <laughs> if it doesn't work, it doesn't work and that's nothing against you. I I I get that. Um um I just Professor Raythrin, as your student, may I be completely frank with you? I would want nothing else but that, Mira Marchand, my best student. The song isn't good. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's not a good song. She's she mm. wants to embarrass you. And I think that it would be bad for you and bad for Delness if you played that song in front of her. So what I can do is I can help you work on something a little better perhaps later Mm -hmm. and you can do what you like with it i can't play it with you i can't advise you to sing it but that's that's what i will do i'm sorry oh that's perfectly fair that sounds fair enough to me i can't ask you to put your anything on the line for my uh romantic life and just willing the willingness to help me uh make a better composition uh would be appreciated mira okay 
and I will shake his hand. <laughs> Absolutely, he like goes a in for like a hug. He goes in for a hug, and you like nope. grab his I hand. Stick nope, my hand nope. out to shake, shake his hand. Uh, meanwhile, the man needed to be told how it is. <laughs> That's true. Meanwhile, outside, Winsler, what are you talking to all of the parents about as you wait outside of the locked preparatory room? You showed up, <laughs> and like the Wallabies are there. Your parents are there. Your dad like puts you in a big old hug and like picks you up, and your mother goes, "I didn't know what." exactly that bug was but it did scare me quite a bit i'm very proud of you that you were you managed to do such a thing i i my but winsler i would like if you could not get hurt anymore because it's very scary i i think his face is still like very red yes your dad <laughs> doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon so i think he's just kind of like nodding and agreeing like yeah, I'll, I'll 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 try that next time. I, w- I wasn't e- expecting to, you know, get blown up mm-hmm. like I did, but you know, I think it kind of worked out in the end. Maybe it's just a little. Yeah. The the rest of the parents are gathered here, Winsor. You see the Idleberries and the Marchands. Uh, Mira's mother will look at you and say, "I mean, you handled it really well. You took it really well." That tends to happen. I'm, I'm, you know, despite not having the greatest of constitution compared to my friends, I'm very good at handling pain. <laughs> the parents, in one way or another, <laughs> your dad, your dad oh, has slaps you on the back and he goes, "Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah." <laughs> There's one time when he was a kid, a whole two by Uh-oh. four fell on his foot, cried about it for a week. Ooh, what a strong little lad! I would have cried for two weeks. I mean, you did when that happened to you, too. No, we don't talk. We talk. And he literally looks down at you. He looks down at you with, like, contempt. Only a father can look at his son who's just embarrassed him in front of friends can look at. I'm just, and he'll go, just shrugging. All right, all right. Okay. I was trying to make you look good, just so you know. Uh, and the door will to the preparatory room will crack open. Uh, Elric Raythrin will kind of like walk out. He he's mis- a bit misty eyed. I'm not going to lie at that. He looks a bit uh, sad at the fact that his student won't hug him, uh, and at the fact that just the general conversation. Um, and will kind of like student oh. and future daughter in law will just not hug him. <laughs> Uh, and stands here kind of weirdly. Uh, the rest of you can see the par- the other parents gathered here. Uh, Mira, did you want to introduce Elric to your parents? Oh, boy. You know, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not right now, at least. He looks at your parents and snaps and points at them and goes and, like, wipes the tears away from his eyes oh, and, like, his forehead and, like, like dusts his beard off of like the weird gross whatever was in there from like what he was eating over the week and he just never cleaned it oh, and he'll, he'll go God. you must be the Marchands I am Professor Elric Raythrin I am your daughter's uh, musical applications of uh, magic so, hi, teacher mom and dad um, can we do introductions I'm later I'm also I, like, uh, her girlfriend's father it's a pleasure yes, to meet um, you but uh, mom and dad I also wanted to introduce you to my mentor who isn't quite here yet but you know how I was saying he was sick he's better now I talked to him this morning and he's better so that's really good by the way did you like the duel I thought it was really fun and I, we were so excited to win but it's gonna be like a whole thing at the next duel because one of the people we're dueling is gonna be like my girlfriend's ex so you guys are gonna love to watch that one because like we're totally gonna win if we don't it's gonna be really embarrassing for us um so yeah i hope you liked it mira your parents look like completely frazzled as you and professor raythren are just talking over each other he goes she's one of my favorite students and you go yes, and this is what and- the duel is gonna be tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he's like this is what she did for her exam she did absolutely spectacular in my class but none of the others uh, and you're like and 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 right uh yeah. and just are talking over one another uh your father puts a sh- hand on your shoulder and goes I can't wait to see how it turns out. I'm so excited. I'm s- very proud of you for uh, just the, the 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 dueling is so exciting and it's uh-huh. just so and he like looks like the the a, a guy who doesn't really know how to describe action or sporting activity in an actual <laughs> way and he yeah. goes it was evocative and you did so good, Mira. <laughs> Uh, and I can't wait to see how the f- semifinals and finals and everything like that go. Oh, well, we're not going to win the finals because those are like oh. eighth years or something, but we're mm. definitely going to win the semifinals. And that's pretty cool. Plus, we already get to sit at the winner's table, which is super mm-hmm. exciting because we get to sit with all the other people who like made semifinals, which is mm-hmm. cool, right? Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for coming. Um, and yeah. Elric will go. 
let's go get a drink. The two of you <laughs> and I. Oh, and, like, uh, and I kind of like, I do the little like, I look at my parents and I do like the little hand over the neck expression of like, you don't want to go get drinks with this guy. <laughs> but like at the end of the day, they can do what they want. Absolutely. Your mother will <laughs> kind of like point and say, I over, I thought I, I think I overheard you saying something about what happened last night when you were knocking at the door, uh, Mr. Uh-oh. Rather. And what, what, Mira, what was that about? What? Was there something going on? Yeah, there was like a, it was a, like a little party at um, a, a house. Ritual. Yeah, ritual party uh, mm-hmm. where you all go, you all get together and do magic together for like, it's cool. Like, you know, you cast fairy fire Not and dangerous. you see how pretty the lights are. And um, it was just like a party and Delmas was there, Harmless. which is why Professor Raythrin wanted to ask and make sure that everything was cool. Mm-hmm. And my friends she were there. She just came home. Late it's, last night, I was worried. I was yeah. like, did something happen? She was crying. Not well, going to get into she it. Was, <laughs> um, it was because we talked about her ex-girlfriend because, you know, because we're going to duel her soon. So I was like, hey, Delness, what's the story there with you and Joan? And Delness was like, oh, I'm going to tell you everything about this. And then she got really sad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, all, the, the, this is a mess. <laughs> the camera turns like, over to I, Delness, who's like a bit further down the like breezeway, who's like standing by the two Idleberry twins, who are just kind of like they have the uh, they have. This is a very important note. They have a small golden elf ear on a string. Anora does, and she's just like throwing it against the wall <laughs> and being like, I mean, it's denting <laughs> it a little should. bit. And Delness is just watching. Uh, like, oh, wow, wow, great, you're doing so great. And is just completely oblivious to this conversation <laughs> happening, like, five feet away. Yeah. Um, what are the rest of you up to? I think Serenep has, like, fixed herself up and, mm-hmm. like, like rolled up the scroll and, like, um, I think, um, yeah. shit, because she has to hide her hair now. Um, Uh-oh. Uh, wig. <laughs> well, no, she still has, like, the wraps and everything. Yes. So she's gonna like just get like get completely dressed up and Absolutely. like come next to the door, just watch Mira and Professor Raythrin just like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just going through be, a whole thing. The absolute like, messes next to each other. Yeah. Um yeah. Uh, and integrity. To watch. Um I think at this point I will be um going up to my mother. Mm. Um mm. and because like I haven't seen them since last night. Yes. And she gives you a big just, hug, big kiss on the cheek. She goes, that was amazing. You blasted a crate to absolute bits. Uh, and, and, and you, you were just outstanding. Didn't get, you didn't get hurt. I couldn't ask for more. I could say the same because like during our last fight, I was on the floor mm-hmm. for some time and I just, I just wanted to make you proud, and I just wanted to do something oh. awesome. And well, you make me make proud every time. Proud. You make me proud every single day, Integrity. And she'll oh. pull you a bit close and whisper in your ear and say, I want to talk to your friend privately. Do you think she'd be okay with that? Uh-oh. I think, Uh-oh. I think she needs it. Okay. Maybe tonight Uh-oh. sometime, or I'll find some. I'll find some time. But anyways, we were looking at things last night gifts and such things and it it was just a great thing i found a book on uh elven shoemaking techniques to bring home to your father uh and i found just a big poster of the school to bring for your uh, brother just a map of the campus it just seemed really nice uh and very easy and clear to understand uh I, i'll bring that to him and put it up in his room or something um how are you are you doing okay uh do you need something to yes. eat yes is everything fine? You look like a bit tired and worn out. I am extremely tired. Barely got any sleep last night. Mm. Mm. So there's mm. that. Uh when before you talk to Saren up, I think that I should let her know first that you want to talk oh. to her. Okay. If that's She's- all right. She's going through a yeah. lot, I can imagine. Serena, if you get like tingles down your spine, you're like, someone's talking about me. But that could <laughs> be so many people right now. Um, uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, let her know for me. Maybe I can just talk to her tomorrow at the gala when there's a lot going on, right? A bit more under the radar so that uh, I don't want her to be seen speaking with me tonight or anything. If there's people on campus watching her every move, uh, I don't want to make life worse for her. Yes. Yeah. Thank okay. you so much. No of worries, course. my dear. Um, anyways, anyways. Do Do you want to like help me look for clothes for the gala? 
clothes for the I would love to help you look for clothes to the gala. Um, yes. The conversation continues in a casual tone. Uh, the topic of clothing does come up. Clothing for the gala. Integrity, your mother, is totally keen to help you go and browse clothing. Mira, your mother, her ear tingles and she hears this. He, she hears Amaret talking about this and Integrity talking about this. And she'll look at you and say, I brought something for you. Uh, uh-huh. A couple of things, actually. I've just been idle hands in the past couple of uh since, since you went off to school, I, I've just been worried about you. Uh, I brought them for you. I haven't given them to you yet. I was going to give them to you probably tonight. Uh, if I can just, they're in a bag somewhere, shoved away. Dresses. Um, oh, mm-hmm. that's if you so good because I didn't those, really have anything or, for or the gala. You, or, or you could go with your friends and try to find something that's for sale. I, I wouldn't be offended if that was the case. Oh, no, no, no. Yours are going to be like way better. And plus you like know my size. So it's mm-hmm. no, that's that's really, really nice. Thank you. But what if they have they could have something magical on campus or something like that that just fits like a glove? You know, I think I'm good as far as magical stuff goes at this present okay. moment. Hmm. Your mom looks at you with a very happy expression. She's giving you many outs to hurt her <laughs> feelings and you've not done so. And she looks very happy with that. Um... So the conversation attenuates. Your parents either, what do you tell me? No one immediately rushes up to you all to say, hey, you're in fucking trouble right now, which I think might still be, if you recall, is the underlying (laughs) thing of today, of that worry Mm. of someone at some point today is going to come up to you. If you recall, right before your duel, Headmaster Crow pulled artists away. Mm -hmm. Uh, You don't see Crow. You don't see any of the... Uh, counselors, council of administrators in the crowd as you would on a normal day. You don't see Kenneth Horse Wrangler. None of these people pop out to you so much. So tell me what you do, folks. This is kind of like downtime, right? Tell me what's going on. Mm. I might like just visit some like campus stuff with my parents and like at the same time, Mm. when I have some time, I think I might be thumbing through Night of the Living Dead. Um like walk them up to a stall yeah and just be like this is this chat stall. a little it's, and then like find mm-hmm. a little spot under a tree or something and get a little bit of light reading in absolutely Amira, tell me what you want from this book night of the living dead which was recommended to you by one and only Indumati Parlor as a wonderful resource for the undead. Yes. So the main thing that I am looking for in this book is information about the different types of living dead. Essentially, implicitly, the question that I want to figure out is what (laughs) is Adeline? And so figuring Uh, out how to identify between different types, what the different types are, that's really what I'm looking for. mm, Give me an Arcana check. Okay. Um, 16. That's pretty good. Plus... I don't think I have a great bonus to Arcana, but... Oh, I do. I'm proficient on it. Um, 19. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my fucking God. Okay. (laughs) So it's almost like a visual encyclopedia, Mira. So you walk your parents up and you're like, this is so-and-so stall. And they like look around for a second and you like take a moment to yourself to like skim through as many pages as you possibly can uh there's vampires who cannot be in the sunlight who cannot cross water who are compelled to count anything that they see so if you throw sand at them they'll just be paralyzed uh and they are well known for just sucking blood and being very uh the the person writing this seems to think that they're very erotically charged uh, yeah, that's right. That's a yeah. Uh, there's <laughs> uh, banshees, which you flip to next, and this takes particular note for you, maybe because it's a distinctly elven type of undead. Uh, however, they are spectral in form and shriek at the top of their lungs. Uh, a cursed and vain soul stuck for all time in the material plane, unable to pass on to the next one. Uh, there's just generally ghosts, which are in the same vein, but less less specific, uh, just kind of souls which have been stuck. You've interacted with ghosts before, Mira, and can very quickly check that one off as, no, she's probably not a ghost. Uh, there <laughs> are zombies, which are de- the decaying, revived corpses. The one which gives you a no on this one, or like the big X on the spot, is that they don't really have good mental faculties. Right, they're not very with it when they get brought back. Someone normally they're not hip with it. They're not hip with it. (laughs) They don't don't keep up with the times. Um, The big one, which looms, the one that 
sits there on the page. You flip to it and see a illustrated, a sketched out form of what almost looks like a skeletal person. Uh, their skin drawn taut over their face for a f- scary moment. I think the face looks a lot like, if you recall her face, Nesca, uh, mm. and just that skin drawn taut over bones. I think a shiver runs down your spine. The just glare of it, like the glare of this illustration just resembles that so strikingly. And I think the illustration itself almost has a bit of a high cheekboned facial structure too which adds to it but nonetheless a lich characteristically is a great practitioner of arcane arts they partition themselves and leave behind their mortality in a physical form whether imbibing that into another person or just some physical token which must be kept safe Typically, they let their appearance decay, although with the power of great magical, with great magical power, that shouldn't be that big of a deal for those who want to maintain their appearances, Mira, to maintain Uh their appearances. Liches live until their phylactery is destroyed and their corporeal form is destroyed as well. Although many of them make a lot of backup copies of themselves in order to prevent such things from happening. Another thing that shockingly draws you closer to think like the Nesca comparison, Mira, of like thinking about those urns that mm-hmm. you were yep, I was entrusted just that. with. Yeah. So if we need to permanently kill Nesca, maybe we just fucking burn her knife <laughs> or her orb. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. So looking through, skimming through, it seems that the undead you are most likely dealing with, unless Adeline is just missing the burns in the sunlight feature of a vampire because you've never thrown sand at her you don't know you've never seen her cross water the two that you can narrow it down to vampire maybe 10 percent chance but a lich strong likelihood good to know thank you it's scary yeah mira's reading this and like she's really got like her grip very tight against mm-hmm. the pages and it's almost making an indent into the book as she's reading mm-hmm. this Mm-hmm. And then your parents like walk out and they're like, are you ready to go? And you're like, oh, jump. Yep. Ah, yep. I'm good. And like slam the book shut, like yes. shove it into like a shoulder bag of Absolutely. some kind. Like. Absolutely. <laughs> um, okay. What about the rest of you? Integrity, Idleberry, Serenup, Cinderman, Winsler, Wallaby. What are your um, downtime activities? I think that with everything, I think Serenup is kind of just hoping to get some alone time. So I think mm. she first goes to check on Angelica. Maybe see if Corinne is there. Yeah. Like, maybe check, try and see if she can bump into Philip and maybe Mm. go and check on the sweetling. Maybe spend some time just sitting under the sweetling and just, like, relaxing. Serenapth, you cover yourself in a way that, like, with those big robes and shawls and scarves to conceal your appearance more than usual and make your way across campus. Every now and again, you hear whisperings of like, oh my God, did you hear about the betrothal? One guy says to his friend and the other one goes, what are you talking about? And they're like, <laughs> just conveying it. And soon enough, as you walk by, it is blown well out of proportion that the prince himself showed up to oh propose God. to you. Oh my uh, God. Ah, oh, the telephone game. I love it. Yes. You walk into the infirmary there's two attendants, one with a, a chain on his glasses. He seems to be delighted and in a very good mood. He'll wave to you when you walk in. Uh, and you look over to Angelica's bed. She is she looks like a person who has a bad fever uh, and is asleep, right? Is that she, different from what she was before? Like, is this like a sign that maybe she's waking up? It looks <laughs> worse than she was before. Uh, like before she just looked sleeping and kind of like in pain. Now she's like really sweaty and pale too. Um, can I like put like my hand to like, like mm-hmm. just like check yeah. her, I guess. Like- she's very cold. Uh, she's underneath a big blanket, a big gray woolen blanket, but she's so cold to your touch, Serenap. I think just kind of like looking at her, like mm-hmm. the thought of what the progenitor had promised in yeah. the hatch. Yeah. And everything else that's coming up suddenly. Yeah. But she also knows that, like, she just remembers, like, Mira's reaction to everything. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a Mm -hmm. moment of, like, I need to talk to my friends about this at some point first. 
because <laughs> I'm not going to go behind their backs about this stuff. Absolutely. Uh, you sit and contemplate all of this, Sarah Nepth, uh, thinking about that post-dinner conversation you had with Mira and being down in the sunken hatch all on your lonesome with an unconscious Angelica. All of those thoughts ruminate in your mind. And then you kind of get up knowing, hoping Angelica's going to be fine and just not being able to be here. I think a couple too many people f come into the infirmary and you start to hear those same kind of like the rumor mill going around in here. One person's like, I stubbed my toe. And the other person's like, did you hear about the proposal? Uh, and you're like, oh, I got to <laughs> leave uh, and make your way and check on the sweetling. Uh, it's large. Uh, it has silver leaves and this beautiful green bark. It seems to be growing a foot by the day. It's large now. Almost like po a stick of it, branch of it, poking into the brick of the building, the alchemy building next to it. Uh, and you can kind of like... Take something down. It's kind of blast this building to bits. <laughs> and you can kind of sit here in, it, in its shade uh, off the beaten path where no one will really find you unless they know where you sh are, right? Winsler, are you doing anything specific or just hanging out with your parents? Did you want to get some good gala clothes? Yeah, I need good gala clothes. Mm. As mm. good as what... Me and my parents consider good. Yes. How about we push the wallabies and idleberries together and the f bunch of you can go off in search of gala clothes, go and oh doing some, some prom shopping. This is gonna, there's going to be some very big clash of fashion. <laughs> right Tell me oh what Winsler gets to wear. Or we can just say he gets something and then you can describe that when the gala begins. I think that's more fun. I think, yeah, I feel okay. like that's way better because what I have yes, in mind is absolutely. very Winsler. Absolutely. But oh also, God. it's like, what? Okay. <laughs> uh, your parents will buy it for you, Winsler, uh, no matter the cost. With what money? Your dad pulls a big leather wallet out of his freaking front pocket on his overalls. It says oh genuine God. leather on it, big stamped, as if that's the brand. He probably made it himself. <laughs> probably made it himself and will pay. It's a like a billfold wallet, but he still has gold in it. So yeah. or like silver in it at least. Uh, Sounds about right. Yeah, it's just it's like those ones that have like the big coin pouch that are super annoying to lug around, uh, and he'll pay for it. Uh, meanwhile, I Integrity Idleberry, you are also here. You accompany uh, the Wallabies on this endeavor. Uh, your mother will like help you choose your clothing, but largely leave it up to your discretion. Uh, is there anything else you wanted to be doing during this time? Um, there are two things generally that I would want. One is going to be happening while we're shopping, and yes. the other one is like in the down low in the middle of the night kind of. Well, fun. it's not... <laughs> Well, it's it the, is it's the middle of the day, it's unfortunately. Noon. So the noontime activity, please. Oh, noontime activity. Then. Yes. Okay. The time for such mm. other midnight activities can come later, Carla. <laughs> Looks at Freckle okay. on wrist. It's midnight, That's right? awfully <laughs> suspicious sounding. Okay, okay. Um, while we're shopping, I yes. would like to offer my What's the siblings? name of the shop before we go? What's the name of this clothing shop where the two of you are buying your gala clothes from? Ooh. Fabrics by Dadwick. <laughs> Damn it. The loose thread. And the tent is a fraying, disgusting oh. tarp. Little threads hanging down here from there. But oh hell do they have some sales going on. There's Aptly an entire named. there's an entire rack that's ninety two percent off, Winsler, which is where Holy you buy your shit. things from. Uh integrity. Your your family much more modest heads to the 75% off rack to get a good deal, but not, you know, be not threadbare. the bargain bin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you see the two twins. Your sister walks over to a puddle on campus. She still has this golden ear, and Ernest looks really grossed out by it. She still has this golden elf ear that Mira gave her days ago, like two days ago to really keep safe and don't break it. Uh, and never took back. And so er Nora is just dunking it in a bunch of stuff. There's a big puddle of water that she just like drops it in and like <laughs> nice. crouches down and like watches it like twitch a little bit in the water for a couple of seconds before pulling it out. You walk up to your siblings though. Uh, and Nora and Ernest, do you guys want to pick out some really nice outfits? Ernest will go, I would love to pick out a really good outfit. 
and it could just be like what I wear on special occasion days, like Mondays. I oh. am going to start coughing. <coughs> and then I start pulling out like um, <laughs> different colored uh, cloths. Cloths. Okay. And then I am going to spread them out. And okay. it says, will you guys go to the ball with me? <laughs> Ah, so your two siblings are at the 75% off rack. They are picking through things. You cough, cough. They turn and look at you, a worry. Your mom looks at you also, a very, like, a worry expression on her face of, like, oh, my God, is my daughter sick? Uh, And you start pulling cloths out of your mouth. Are they actually in your mouth? Did you actually put cloths in your mouth? Or is it magic? Like a it's magic. Mouth. Okay, okay. So you actually begin to pull from from a fake thumb on your hand it, that's tone matched. You painted it to match your skin color. Uh, some 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 fabric. Uh, and you pull this out and it says, "Will you go to the ball with me?" Uh, and your sister looks at it for a few moments and goes, "Oh, is that for us or is this practice for like someone else?" <laughs> oh, Damn. Geez. Damn. Ruthless. I am like. <laughs> My jaw is hanging. <laughs> it was like, I put in so much effort to ask you guys to go with me, and are you just making fun of me? Ernest will say, I, I'll i go with you. I will accompany you. I would love, as long as I can sit at the winner's table with you, uh, and I assume that's where, like, they'll probably have good food at the winner's table, right? And your sister then, like, cues into that and goes, I'll, can I go with you? Is it one of us or both of us? I'll go with you. You don't take him. Don't take him. He'll be like s- smelly. God. Uh, I think I can take both of you because like you're both half a person. <laughs> Damn. Wow. Kids well, don't count as people. <laughs> Holy shit. No. No. That's not <laughs> like, uh-huh. You're only half people. Because we're kids, Aww. right? Yeah, so sad. Yeah. Because your kids. Because so like two kids can fit in the same space as one adult. It makes basically, sense. yeah. It makes a lot of sense. I also bought more tickets, so <laughs> that's why it's fine. I see your siblings, your kid siblings, enthusiastically integrity, enthusiastically accept on promise of good food, which is where their brains have gone to. But your brother seems excited to rub rub shoulders with the the fancy people. Your mother looks at you pleased and purchases the clothing. Mira. You are walking around with your two parents. I think they are sta- like walking ahead of you a little bit, and you're just like walking along behind them, very casual like. And you will feel a hand grasp on your shoulder. You did not hear footsteps walking up to you. You just feel a hand grasp your shoulder. Uh-oh. Okay. And you turn and see a blonde woman, Adeline Rathren. She's dressed all head to toe in like a gold like robes she seems to have that disguise magic upon herself mira and she will look at you and very quietly your parents continue to walk on they don't seem to have noticed you've stopped your parents continue walking on she grabs you by the shoulder and she'll say the council would like to speak with you and your friends now um okay i'll find them they're around we can find them together i've been tasked with bringing the four of you that's fine. I don't have anything I'm doing right now. I was just reading a really interesting book. Oh. Uh-huh. And what was that book? The one you checked oh. out from the library? Yeah, it was about archives? liches. Really interesting. Mm, anyway, yeah, I'm sure. We'll find with. my friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Are you trying to intimidate her, Mira? Yeah, I am. Make an intimidation Jeez. check. <laughs> okay. She'd be like, I know what you are. Yeah. No, I'm like staring her straight in the eyes right now. Yeah. I, Mira does not like this woman. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Mira doesn't. Uh, oh, fucking God fucking damn it. Oh, no, of course. So it's that's a, one. a natural one plus six <laughs> for a grand total of Christ. seven. So how does the line that powerful. you say actually go? Because we know what Mira wanted to say in her head, but what, how does it come out? Um, I was reading. It was, um, it was about, I was, it was, um, it was not living. Um, it was lich. It was lich. I was reading a lich book. It was, um. Oh, Fine, let's just go find uh, let's go find my friends. Is that something you're interested in? Yeah, I guess you could say that. And she'll pull you now a bit to where she was standing, which was in the shadows of an archway, and push you against an arch, against the stone wall. Oh shit. And she will say, Are you trying to threaten me right now? Um 
I'm just... Is that just, what your intent is? I I'm, don't think you understand the severity of the situation you're in. The precarious nature of this situation, Mira Marchand. I'm just saying that I know things, okay? Um, mm. But no, I'm not... Why are I'm you not, looking into uh, such things? Mm, 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 uh... If you want allies in this moment, in this time of need, I would suggest you speak truthfully, Mira Marchand. You're not very good at hiding it. I'd never intended to hide it from you. Well, there you go then. Why are you bringing it to me as if it's some sort of threat, as if it's something to overturn my life with? Do you think the people who are close to me don't know about it? Uh, does Delnus know about it? Because it doesn't seem like she does. She doesn't need to know about this. Then stop, like... You're getting people, and you and your boss are, like, getting people to watch us and spy on us, and, like... You're involved with something here, Mira Marchand. I think this situation illustrates that more than anything else. Well, it's our thing, so... It's your thing, and yeah. other people are being impacted by it. The Lady of the Woods only wishes to help. If you told me anything that could be of use to us, I'm sure she would hear you out. I'm sure she no. would extend goodwill towards you in this moment of need. And she, her hand grips into your shoulder. Well, we'll see what happens at this hearing thing then. This information doesn't need to be known by everyone. You don't need to tell everyone. If you tell me what's happening here, I will bring it to the Lady of the Woods' ears and no one else's. What evil lurks beneath the school? I don't really understand it that well myself. That's fine. We have more than enough resources to help with understanding. We just need to know what it is we are looking for. The libraries of the woods are endless, after all. Well, if I wanted to say anything to you, I would need to talk to my friends first. Very well. Let's go find them then, Mira Marchand. And she stands back up she lets go of your shoulder and only now do you realize how hard she was gripping it mira uh like very much eh, it just stings like her nails were digging in almost uh and she will lead you around she holds in her hand a small uh gray stone uh it's shaped like an arrowhead almost but quite large uh and she will walk around with it it hovers almost a foot or so not a foot what it hovers like two inches above her palm and seems to be pointing in certain directions. When she first holds it up, Mira, it's pointing straight at you. And then you see her whisper something under her breath silently in some magical incantation. And uh. the arrowhead points elsewhere. And so it like tracks people. Yes, it nice. tracks oh, people. As fuck, and I love it. Uh, yeah, I'm Adeline. I threaten children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? I have a compass that doesn't point north. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a witch because I literally have no life. <laughs> and Damn. she will, while walking, Mira, <laughs> she will say, I heard from Kenneth, horse wrangler, that you requested no piano at the gala. Yes, I did. We were making small talk, and it just happened to come up. Why is that? I thought I was going to get serenaded. I advised... Elric against it, because I think that would be bad for everybody, including Delmas. Including Delmas. Of course. Oh, and she'll look at you. Uh, like, you can see off in, the, like, off in the distance, Mira, like, Integrity and Winsler with their families. Also, you know that your parents did just did not notice you disappearing, by the way, so that's going to be a thing you have to explain later. But nonetheless, <laughs> off in the distance, you do see uh, Integrity and Winsler, with whom... Adeline seems to be leading you both towards, and she'll look at you and say, always looking out for Delmas, right? Yes. Don't tell her about this. I do not respond. Okay. Adeline, the tell smile her. disappears a little bit, and she turns back around. She walks up to you, Winsler Wallaby, and you, Integrity Idleberry, in a similar, scarily quiet fashion, and will just announce her presence by saying, Mr. Wallaby and- Ah! <laughs> <laughs> She almost gets taken aback by that as you scream. And she'll go, and Miss Idleberry. <laughs> the council requests your presence, demands your presence at this very instant, I should say. Please come with me. Did she really have to walk up so quietly? She scared the... She scared the... Ugh, my, my wits out. I will follow you wherever you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
integrity uh, replaced by a robot follows along. The stone changes directions once more. The three of you, like little ducklings, follow behind Adeline uh, until you climb up a set of stairs and see Serenuf sitting there beneath the shade of a big sweetling, uh, an Isithilian tree here on the material plane. Uh, She'll walk up to you, Serenuf, and look down at you sitting on the dirt and say, Serenup Cinderman, congratulations on the betrothal. I'm sure it's a big day for you. You are needed by the council right now. Oh, oh, um, okay. She stands up and wipes off, mm-hmm. like, the back of her, like, dress and everything. Yes. And you can join your three friends in the duckling brigade behind Adeline. <laughs> uh, she leads you a very short distance into the alchemy building. Uh, she walks to a... In, in the entryway, she walks to a small bookshelf uh, in the uh, corner of the room. She will push on it hard with her left hand. She's stowed this little arrowhead stone at this point. But she pushes this bookshelf and opens up a, uh, a walkway which was concealed by it. And she will look at the four of you. Uh, unless there was a conversation you all wanted to have in the couple of seconds while she was, like, walking away from you, right? I think we're just scared shitless. So. Perfect. In- inside, <laughs> you see a white stone floor and these black stone walls. It almost makes it have the uh, illusion, like an actual a physical illusion, not a magical illusion, that the floor stretches out into some sort of abyss or void. Uh, it's quite fun to look at. Uh, I heard will- an abyss. We can we jump into it. <laughs> <laughs> she will gesture and say, after the four of you. I will go. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And integrity, robot integrity, would you like to enter? Yes, okay. I do enter. Okay. I'm not a robot. I'm just scared. Ah, that's what it was. <laughs> uh, yes, robots you, are famously scared of everything. Integrity, as you, the last person, enters into this hall, uh, you feel a cold hand like on your back, almost like, guiding you in as Adeline just ensures that you're not going to back out at the very last minute and will kind of, with a bit of force, push you the last couple inches in and then walk behind you and close this shelf. The floor itself seems to glow with some sort of magical light as you all walk quietly down the hallway towards the Council of Administrators, uh, which will happen next time on Trials and Trebuchets. Because that's where we're going to end this one. Uh, Sarah, could you give us an outro? Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Trials and Trebuchets. If you did, it would mean a lot for you to check us out on Instagram or Twitter at Trials and Trebs. You can see teasers, maps, fan art, and other stuff. You can also leave us a positive review or any kind of review, really. But, you know, it would make (laughs) us smile if it was positive on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher app you use. Yeah. We also have a Discord server where you can listen to uh, other listeners. Talk with us. Talk with the cast. <laughs> talk with fans. It's a great time. I yeah, haven't done one of these in a fun. while. Um, Real? Yeah, it's a really great <laughs> time. See ya. And we have a Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash trials and uh, where you can uh, donate to us on an ongoing basis and we would really appreciate you doing so. Yeah, uh, you, you get, get cool benefits. Money, like yeah. blooper reels. Getting to make your own student NPC. Hell yeah. Um, getting to see DM notes and other yeah. cool perks. Yeah, uh, so go on and donate if you uh, feel like doing so. Uh, And that's it, folks. Uh, We'll see you next week for council shit and uh, the expulsion of swim. Bye! Bye!